When most people think of survival at sea, they picture desperation. Salt water sores, cracked lips, and, well, hopeless drifting under a burning sun. But hidden in maritime history is one of the most remarkable examples of human endurance and preparedness ever recorded. It began with a simple wooden box, the standard-issue lifeboat chest, tucked beneath the benches of ships in the early 20th century. Inside, it held everything 30 men would need to stay alive for two months, stranded in the middle of nowhere. Not luxury, not comfort, just survival distilled to its most efficient form. This chest wasn't packed by chance. Every item was chosen through trial, error and tragedy. Naval engineers, survival experts and sailors themselves refined it over decades of shipwrecks and rescues. And when you open it, when you really study what's inside, you realise it's not just a box of rations. It's a lesson in human foresight, logistics, and the art of enduring hardship with discipline. Before the early 1900s, most shipwreck survivors depended on luck more than planning. They might have a few biscuits, a flask of water, or whatever food they could scavenge before abandoning ship. Thousands died not because they couldn't survive the sea, but because they lacked provisions that could last. After a string of maritime disasters, including the Medusa in 1816 and later the Titanic in 1912, maritime authorities began to standardise survival equipment. The lifeboat chest became mandatory on many merchant and naval ships. Its contents were carefully tested for shelf life, compactness and ease of use at sea. Everything inside had to withstand salt spray, extreme temperatures and months of storage without spoiling. A standard lifeboat chest from the 1930s and 40s contained a combination of food, water, tools and first aid all measured down to the ounce. The goal wasn't comfort. It was uh, really about striking a balance between calories, hydration and morale. Each chest was designed to sustain 30 men for 60 days, providing around 1,000 calories per man per day. A starvation ration, but just enough to stay alive and, well, functional. Inside, you'd find hardtack biscuits, thick, rock-hard wafers of flour and water baked until they were nearly indestructible. Each piece could last for years if kept dry. Alongside the hardtack were tinned pemmican or corned beef, dense with protein and fat, and lime or lemon juice concentrate to prevent scurvy. Chocolate was included too. Not for indulgence, but for its high-calorie content and, you know, a bit of a psychological boost, though it was often in smaller rations. There was fresh water stored in airtight tins, but in a very limited supply. A thirty-man chest might carry about sixty litres, barely enough for survival, really. To stretch it, men were trained to drink sparingly, using oilcloths to catch rainwater and desalination kits to extract small amounts of fresh water from the ocean air. What's fascinating is that the chest didn't just carry food and water, it carried tools for renewal. So, fishing lines, hooks and small harpoons allowed survivors to catch food once rations ran low. There were also signal mirrors, flares and a small compass because, well, survival meant nothing if no one could find you.
And finally, there was a small medical tin, usually containing iodine, morphine tablets, and antiseptic powder to treat wounds and infection. Survival from these chests wasn't guaranteed by the supplies themselves, but by how they were used. Every lifeboat crew had a designated quartermaster whose job was rationing. The instructions inside the lid were clear, never open all the tins at once and never eat when morale was low. Hunger was expected, but panic wasted food faster than starvation. Men were trained to divide each day's ration into strict portions. A single biscuit in the morning, a sliver of meat or chocolate at midday, and another biscuit at night. Water was limited to about half a cup daily until rain or rescue increased supply. The method was brutal, but it worked. One recorded example comes from the 1942 sinking of the Dunedin Star off the coast of Namibia. Thirty-two men survived for 53 days, using only their lifeboat rations and whatever they could catch. They buried their dead at sea, repaired torn sails with shirt fabric, and even traded fishing duties for, well, small sips of water. By the time they were rescued, most were emaciated but alive, and the lifeboat chest had done its job. What stands out about the lifeboat chest isn't just the food. It's the system of redundancy and adaptability built into it. Every modern survival kit, from military bug-out bags to offshore emergency packs, still borrows from this design. The principle is simple, really. Carry only what sustains the essentials. Calories, hydration and morale and rely on your surroundings to supplement the rest. For example, the balance between preserved food and renewable food sources is something modern preppers still apply. It's practical to store canned goods and long-life rations, but pairing them with tools for hunting, fishing or foraging creates true sustainability. Similarly, the small portions of citrus juice in lifeboat chests inspired the vitamin C tablets now found in long-term rations and survival MREs. Even the psychological side of the design still applies, you know. Including something like chocolate or tea might seem trivial, but in survival psychology, small comforts can mean the difference between endurance and despair. If you wanted to apply this to your own preparedness system today, the lesson is clear. Don't overpack, overthink, or overconsume. Build your kit the way those sailors built their chests, with items that don't fail when everything else does. Start with calorie dense, long lasting foods like oats, dried beans, or pemmican. Add renewable tools like fishing line and fire starters. Most importantly, store everything in waterproof, rodent-proof containers. It's not glamorous, but it works. When archaeologists and naval historians open old lifeboat chests today, many of the contents are still intact. Hard tack as solid as the day it was baked, tins sealed tight, chocolate turned white, but still edible. It's a reminder that real survival isn't luck or brute strength. It's systems thinking. Someone, somewhere, had to plan for the worst and make it simple enough for ordinary men to execute under pressure. That's what makes the forgotten lifeboat chest so remarkable. It's not just a relic, it's a blueprint for self-reliance. 
The men who lived because of it proved that careful preparation, even in a wooden box, could outlast storms, hunger, and time itself. If you found this deep dive into forgotten survival design as fascinating as I did, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom, give this video a thumbs up, and share it with fellow history and survival enthusiasts. The past still has lessons worth learning, and sometimes they're hidden in the most unassuming chests.